but I felt extremely close to him, and uh, I wish. Now, another mathematician who died recently was Serge Lang, and I contributed a little bit to the uh, memorial uh, thing for him. And I said something again, which is, I knew him as a graduate student, but he had a, he had a big effect on my life. He was a powerhouse of energy. He showed up at Chicago, lectured on everything under the sun, algebraic geometry, fast field theory, which was one of my main interests, was actually algebraic number theory. And, uh, and I said there, of course, if you know who Serge Lang is, you know that he's had quarrels with everybody in the universe about every conceivable topic. And I said in this little short addition to the remark, I said I felt a little sadness when I heard he died, that I was never able to sort of say, take it easy, don't get into all these fights, it's not worth it. But of course he wouldn't have listened to me anyhow. I felt similarly with Gurdjieff. I wish I could have in some sense, uh, I don't know, had a, an effect on him, but by that time, um, so I also want to say something a little bit which contradicts the tone of many of the talks where they talk about Gerdelian, they make it sound like he did these incredibly complex things. That's not true. He was a man of great intuition. Almost all of his theorems were, you might say, insightful theorems which you can understand in a moment or two. Again, a little bit, a little bit egotistic that I say my work is not that. You could believe perhaps that forcing is going to work, but you cannot see the ramifications of it until you really get down to thinking about it. And the other, so my other disappointment, so I would like to tell you my feeling that, that the greatness of Gödel was this insightfulness. If I can use some other silly, overblown analogies, it's almost like he saw is it the Bible where Moses has to turn his face away from God because it blinded him or something? I felt that he thought about things that were almost too much for him. He was somehow thinking that he had analyzed the notion of truth. Perhaps it affected his mental state. I don't know. Uh, it's well known that he had mental problems. Uh, but uh, it's, it's almost as if... But anyhow, I thought I was talking to a man that we had both traveled down the same road. It's not a happy road entirely. It's a road of deep, deep frustration and pessimism. I told you the instant where I remember looking at myself in the mirror and saying, you poor SOB, if I can use that, what are you doing thinking about these questions that you're never going to get anywhere with? Uh, and I think that he must have had his dark moments too. Uh, but I was thinking mentality, I wish we could have been closer, but I said in a previous lecture, we came from extremely different backgrounds, extremely different temperaments, and we never could have been close in that sense, but he was always extremely kind to me, even though I felt it was an effort, even a one hour chat, once every two weeks, I felt it exhausted him, but he, you know, he was extremely kind about it, and uh, so I will always remember that about him, uh, but I do have this feeling that, uh, so people talk about unknowability and all that, I, I don't know if that's the way he thought about it. I think he felt that he was making progress, he discovered things, but that it was, he saw the light, and the light was a bit blinding almost. Because I can only say, at the risk of being a little bit over, over emotional, it was, it was frightening almost when I did my own work, that suddenly I could construct all these universes. I, I, almost, I just couldn't believe it that you could do this much. And that was undoubtedly why other people also were a little bit hesitant to admit that I was totally correct. Uh, uh, another point of historical interest. I saw in a book, perhaps it was Gregory Moore's book on Axner Choice, in which he had a reference to Skolem, in which he said, Skolem anticipated my method. And my first reaction was, what are you saying? I mean, of course, I was hurt by this. But by God, I looked up the reference, and Skolem had some amazing, prescient thoughts. And I felt, I made a joke with somebody that if, if Gödel was my great father figure, Torvald Skolem was <laughs> the wise elder brother for me. He understood logic in a very direct way. And in my opinion, he was a plain old-fashioned mathematician. He had worked in diagram and equations, periodic analysis, algebras, simple algebras, etc. And he approached it in a very matter-of-fact way. And when I read this thing, he actually says, 
he talks about constructing different models of set theory, and he said, of course, the interesting thing would be to introduce a set of integers which had new properties. He discussed rather, I might use the word, trivial ways of constructing new models using general techniques, the scope of urban activity. But he said, of course, the interesting thing would be to introduce a new set of integers. But he, he sort of said, I have no idea how to do this. When I read this, I almost felt a shock. Unfortunately, he died about the very year my work came out. And I, I've been friendly with Dr. Finn Firdestal, Norwegian math visitor who comes to Stanford often. And he said he was Skolem's last student. And I said, did he ever meet Gerber? He said, no, he was a very shy man. Although he visited the United States, he never picked up the phone and said, Kurt, do you think we could get together some weekend? Because uh, Skolem had also very strong philosophical views, but very different. At one point, if he thought about models. I've looked at Gerber's work, and the word model does not appear very often, because he was well aware of it. I would say he emphasizes the syntactical approach, which means, for those of you who aren't experts in the subject, you could say that to show that a certain system of axioms is consistent or a certain thing can be proved, this is a purely formless statement about how what can be proved using finite numbers of deduction. I very quickly said, despite my formless conviction, you'll never get anywhere this way. The integers, the sets exist for all practical purposes, you better be talking about sets and not talking about sentences. But I don't think Gertl, I would have loved if Gertl had said to me, you know, interesting that you concentrated on models. So I should mention something else that as a 